Hey Buzzers, welcome back to another weekly recap where we dive into the hottest celebrity gossip and drama. Let's get right into it. Sean Mam Kizem Kiza is in hot water again with SARS. This time the tax authority is seeking to seize her luxury vehicles, including a Lamborghini and a Rolls Royce, to cover over 37 million rents in unpaid taxes. The situation escalated when advocate Quareth Nood, representing SARS, was critically injured in a shooting believed to be connected to the ongoing legal battle. The court has ordered ordered Mamkiza to surrender her vehicles within seven days if ruling goes against her. Actress Latoya McKenna and her ex-wife Lebo Geswa are back in the headlines with a new wave of drama. The details are still unfolding but tensions have been running high leading to public spats and legal threats. There's his truth, her truth and then there's yes. the truth. Yes. So what is out there are allegations. Yes, yes. That's where I was getting to. Right. So let's then maybe try to address the allegations that are already out there. So the first one that I want us to get into, right? Last year in August, I remember I gave you guys a call and you were together. And then I said to you, Victoria, two weeks ago, there were police being called at your place, mm -hmm. I understand that there's been an incident of assault that has occurred. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about it. And at the time, could be because you were not ready or I'm not sure what your reasons were, but you said, there's no such a thing, we are okay. Mm -hmm. Take us to that incident first. What happened at your home in Mosa game on August last year that made you want to leave? Number one, I do apologize for saying to you that nothing happened, but you also need to understand that when you've got your perpetrator right here next to you and listening to that conversation, there's no way I'm going to say to you it's true. Mm. You get me? Um, I'm a victim of GBV. I have been. And basically, I lost myself. I lost my voice. I lived in fear for a very long time and um, what happened, gosh, wow, wow, but you see now me telling you what happened is us going into details again, Whew, yes, it was true by the way and there were cops that came and I needed to go there with cops because um, I needed my things. Mm -hmm. I didn't even go with cops because I've opened a case, but I did run away. I ran in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I ran for my life. I ran and I could hardly see where I was going because my eyes were, were shut yeah. and swollen. Mm. Um, yeah. Which is a basic thing. She can't be just saying Konano without Mdundu. Everything in there I bought from my pocket with my money. Things that she should have had, even not as it's a proper. I did not have to go to the shops outside of Muti to sustain her. It's actually embarrassing for her to be saying to you, because she's been going all over Jobek. Let her go back to Springs to quite them to the woman's house and go get them to the great and come to the room. She's lying. Yeah, she's lying. Yeah, she's lying. Because she's lying. Because now when I was when I, when I married Latoya, I was told I'm marrying a Gobella, right? You will not believe what I've gone through because of Latoya's gene. Like I said to you, I don't know if you understand these things. It's also taking me a lot of lessons for me to understand. Latoya doesn't have a basic thing. This is something how You know, after drinking that, this is something your gobella makes for you. Go no, yeah, go no, whatever, whatever. This is the thing that sits in your sacred. She doesn't have that. 
She doesn't have that. Na ki kopa na letoi. She had a kid go bo ni kamunge. Ma khoto lidi njani di delay everything and kamule khoati ko yani. Because that's bad luck or a bad omen and whatever. All of those things need to be burned. Everything that I've done lele toi mo usango mimba. I've started from scratch with her. She had nothing. She had nothing. She's lying. I don't know what has happened this year. She hasn't completed her journey. Letoya hana mtundu. She should not be having my pasai. Because you are training these kids. What are you going to give them? Why is she lying about you? Next time you talk to your own, you can talk to your own. And this Goko Mule also is another story for another day. But right now, yeah. Are you done with me? I'm done with you, but I need you to give an opportunity to clarify anything you think you haven't clarified as yet. Is there anything that you want to let out that you feel like I didn't ask you? I think I got emotional at some stage. This feud is far from over and will keep you posted on any new developments. In a tragic turn of events, Easy Forex and well-known figure in the trading community passed away. Tributes have been pouring in from friends and followers who admired his work and mentorship. The South African Parliament witnessed a heated exchange between EFF leader Gilles Malema and President Cyril Ramaphosa during the opening session. The verbal sparring covered a range of issues from economic policies to corruption allegations. This clash highlights the ongoing political tensions in the country. On dealing with one issue which I think needs to be observed in our debates in Parliament. It's important, Honorable Malema, that as we debate, we should play the ball and not the man. Now, you spent a considerable amount of time playing me, the man. What is important in building this country is to play the ball of development. You spend a lot of time talking about how the National Union of Mine Workers was formed. I would like you to read some books. But more importantly, I would like you to spend time to talk to people like Gwede Mantashe, who was a miner who was one of the first members of the National Union of Mine Workers. I'd like you to speak to people like James Mutlazi, who was the president of the National Union of Mine Workers. It's a pity that Elijah Bahai, a stalwart in our struggle in the African National Congress has passed on. We are building a shield and a spear that is going to improve the lives of mine workers. And they did exactly that. And this Anglo-American that you quote suffered the greatest brunt of the actions of mine workers. Five years later after formation, being the largest union in this country, they embarked on a 21-day strike and stopped the entire mining industry in this country. And you call that a sellout position. That was not. Speak to Montli Gungubele, who was a member of the NUM. Speak to many others. So in doing what you do, play the ball. The question I would ask, Vavas J. Marikana. Marikana. Vavas J. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Yesterday, the president of the GNU spent a considerable time saying that our input and contribution during opening of parliament debate was playing the man and not playing the ball. The president wrongly said that we previously insulted him by saying he, that his father was a police officer during the dark days of apartheid, and that even when such is a fact, he is proud that his father was a law enforcement officer of apartheid laws. Let's put the facts right in front of this parliament. We never ever have made any reference to President's father in this parliament, and even if we did, 
it would have been a statement of fact and not insult. To say someone's parent is a nurse, it will never be used as an insult. To say someone else's parent is a police officer can never be used as an insult. You said, I said, spoke about your father in order for you to drag my grandmother and fail you because my grandmother has got nothing to do with what I'm doing here. So I want to state it very clear that President, we respect each other and will continue to engage each other robustly. Secondly, parliament and political work in general is not for soft-skinned people who will use all languages to complain whenever we give fair but robust and direct characterization of their political conduct. Here we speak truth and nothing else but the truth. In our characterization of the ball which you spoke about here, we must, which you said we must play, we will also characterize the players to have a fuller picture of both subjective and objective political and ideological conditions. You can never only play the ball without understanding the strengths and weaknesses of the player. We also, we will also welcome, and this we did at a number of times, to tell you the truth is the greatest respect we give to a sitting president. It is a constitutional requirement that you must be held accountable, scrutinized about the decisions you make. Thirdly, we have read and will never argue with you when you say we must read more books about NUM. Reading is a very nice thing to do. There are many books that we have read in relation to the formation of NUM. And we want to state very clear here that you read and called names of individuals who formed the NUM, which we say it was a project of the open IMS. These individuals are all flourishing with you um, being a billionaire, yet the mine, mine workers' conditions continue to be worse. How do you form a union to go and save the workers, but the people who formed the union themselves are the ones who are succeeding, yet the mine workers are struggling? When we remind you that you promised people one million houses, you are going to say it's an insult. It's not an insult. Alexander, one million houses. After we president, you are going to get water. And if you don't get water, action is going to be taken. What action? Minister Senzo Mkunu is still a minister. If there was any action, it was supposed to be on him because the people of Guyane don't have water. And you went to promise them water and you did not give them water. Mr. President, what is even more concerning is that even your seventh administration is characterized by fiction, supported by prepaid mainstream media. What you did to Honorable Sitle Zikalal is painful, that thing. When you see Sitle sitting down on a chair and that white man of a minister sitting next to him, Instead of just removing seat and closing that deputy ministry, you humiliate him in a manner you have done. Deputy ministers do not have a role to play. President Naluena Reatompana, Ibile Rindapuleke T, Naluena Refitari, each other's house, Reakamautu. We don't need cabinet to make, to, we don't need parliament to make an appointment. When we want to see each other, we have done so before. And I criticize you even when it is just the two of us. I'm not criticizing you here because 
I, I see this mem honorable members of parliament who will continue to engage each other robustly. You asked me a question and said, where were you? It was biologically impossible for me to be there. So don't question me. Go and question my mother and my father why I was not there. But when the time came, I showed up. And when the time came, I never sold out. When the time came, I was never a collaborator. I came at an early age and nothing will remove me. At times were there to silence me with the story of being disrespectful. I'm not disrespectful. I engage robustly. Musho wadi nonya na utloa in less than two years. Awe musho wadi nonya na awe! Radio personality Sol Penduka was involved in a serious car accident this week. Fortunately, he survived, but he sustained injuries that required medical attention. Fans and colleagues have been sending their well wishes for a speedy recovery. The music world mourns the loss of Malume Vector, who tragically died in a car accident along with two other artists. The accident occurred in the Free State and investigations are ongoing to determine the cause. The music industry was buzzing with drama as tensions flowed between El Tido, McGee and DJ Maparsa. Allegations and insults were exchanged on social media with each artist defending their reputation. This beef has fans picking sides and eagerly awaiting for the next move from these stars. So with this situation, I look at everything and I'm like, I have to do a character analysis on DJ Maparisa. He's disrespecting people's mothers. He's consistently being called out for taking people's money, robbing people's money. So today we are going to have a character analysis on DJ Maparisa. Okay. Um, I think let's, let's, let's call him by his government name. Sunny Boy. Because Sunny Boy is feeling gassed up right now. Can you please exhibit Sunny Boy so we all know Sunny Boy a little bit better? Please put up the picture of Sunny Boy for people who are not familiar who Sunny Boy is. This is a guy clearly got his first girlfriend when he was famous. No girl would touch him with a pole. Look at him. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like, bro, I clearly understand the character right now. I'm like, this is Sunny Boy. Sunny Boy, before we get to the situation, this podcast has never been about negativity, bro. And I, I hear, actually, I'm going to take a little bit of a segue here. A little bit of a segue. Bear with me, guys. We're here all night, all day, wherever you are in the world. After our Sir Trill episode, Meg G commented on the episode, right? Meg G said, El Tito's podcast. After watching the Sir Trill, it's like, yo, TV, they never want to offend people. They want to get things right. Did he ask him if he's Zimbabwean? I no, uh, I, 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 I'm, I, I didn't get to that part, but I think that would have trended had they asked him. Mm. But I don't think he did. Oh, wow. That's why he'll never come here. Because we'll ask him the real questions. Which <laughs> questions? <laughs> he goes to. Pella, that podcast is your TV for, for, for adults. <laughs> No, man. Ah, hey, wait, no. Stop being crazy. It's safe. We don't piss off the anybody. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're right. We don't want to offend people, bro. Why would we want to offend people? This is a platform where we give people a chance to speak and express how they feel. And then it made me think about a couple of things. This is a little segue with Mac G. Bear with me, guys. Let's address this. Mac G, I saw you a couple months ago, bro. You walked up to me and told me, El Tito, your podcast is so dope, bro. I love it. Keep going. So I'm thinking me and you are cool, you know? And I, let me actually start this with love. Your podcast is dope. You started a lot of things, like podcasting is big in SA because of what you did in the game. Your numbers is crazy. You've done a lot in the podcasting game. I'll give you those props. But 
when you show me the love, I'm thinking me and you, we good. But I watch your podcast. You've mentioned our names like four to five times. And it's never in a good light when you mention our names. I'm like, this is the same guy that walked up to me and told me I'm doing good. My podcast is dope. I'm like, all right, I'm confused. I never said nothing. Kept quiet. All this time you express yourself. Let me deal with Saul too. I met Saul a couple weeks ago, like now recently. He walked up to me and told me, El Tito, you are doing well. Your podcast is dope. I'm like, it's all love there. But then you guys keep on taking jabs at our podcast. Let me tell you guys straight up. Our podcast, bro, is about letting people come here. I'm not a shock jock like Mac G. I'm not. I just tell real stories. And I'll tell you guys right now, as we speak, 2024, no one is doing better interviews than us. Mac G, are you mad from a simple situation that all the guests that you want to have on your podcast, I can speak, a.k.a. Casper Nyoves, Mahu, Sir Trail, are choosing to come to our podcast to have interviews? I'm confused, bro. You're doing well. Why are you worried about us? You are doing well. There's space for everybody in this game. You are shining. Why are you worried about us? Like, let it be known. Are we beefing or are we at war? Because I'm confused right now. Don't give me love behind closed doors and then on your platform, you're always taking jabs at me. I need to know, bro, because you guys got me confused right now. I don't have beef with these guys. I feel like I have to let you guys know what's going on. I'm confused right now. These guys show me love behind closed doors, but when they're on their platform, they're consistently dissing. We are doing us, bro. We're not worried about no one else. I don't have no competition in this game. I don't look at anybody, I promise, in this podcast space. I don't. I'm worried about me and my team. We are doing us. We're doing big business, bro. We don't have time to be beefing and dissing other podcasts at all. So I'm confused with that. Let me know, Mac G, where we stand, because... Don't show me love behind closed doors and then on your platform you dissing me. If it's beef, let it be beef. I don't deal with the wishy-washy things. I don't, bro. Respect me. Never don't tell us, son. So let's move on from MG because that is not my primary focus right now. And I really don't have beef with them, to keep it honest. I'm just confused by how they're moving right now. Because for me... I don't want people to think the only way your podcast can pop off is to be negative, is to be controversial, because we are not. We are not that, bro. I am grown right now. You guys are grown too. I'm confused. Why are you acting like you guys are, are like little teenagers? You're not, bro. If, let it be what it is. We are all grown. I am not going to be out here starting beef with people and you feel like I have to be controversial to let the podcast pop off. We let our work speak for itself, bro. We are trending all the time from this podcast without being controversial. We just have a dope platform where people can express themselves, people can speak their mind. Why would I bring someone on the LTL podcast to grill them? What part of the game is that? I'm beyond that, bro. So if you guys want to do that, do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to get in between that, but don't judge the way I do my work. We're doing big business here. We work with big, big, big brands. You know what I'm saying? And for me, I'm not trying to scare the money away. I'm a businessman. Let me do what I do. Mac G, good luck. Do you. I don't have beef with you. And we all know, without Saul, that podcast will crumble. That's the backbone of your podcast. If Saul leaves, it's over for you, curtains. So, please, let's respect each other. Let's move right. If we're not going to respect each other, let it be. Don't be fake with me. Be honest with me. So let's move on, because you're a little fish fry, okay? So let's get to DJ Maporisa, because you are not the focus right now. Sunny boy, the things you've been doing in this game, industry, you, you, you literally got the other genre looking like surviving piano right now. Because of you and your arrogance and the way you carrying on. Let's speak about DJ Maporisa. You have a label, bro. I want to ask you questions, DJ Maparisa. Where's, where's Shasha? Where's Howard? Where's Mnindo? This is your label. This is our people. They're not even dropping music right now. This is the people that you did on your label. 
you consistently for years fucked over artists and you think you can get away with it. You, I, I don't know, you think you did it? Mlindo posted this about DJ Maporisa. I heard, I mean, he's a big shot, like, but you are in debt, 20 million debt with Sony. Did Mlindo post this? So it brings me to like, this guy's character is a little bit shaky. You, you, you tell me, bro, the way you moving, you been moving, it's got me questioning you. Don't you have, did you have a case last year? You had a case last year because you're a coward. You only offend women and you, you'd rather swear at my mother than me, right? You only offend women because you're a coward. That's what cowards do. Because my mother obviously won't fight you. You have a case because you beat up women. I get it. Didn't you beat up Tuli Pongalo? We all seen the case. And what did you do? The money made it disappear. Money can solve everything. Hmm? Is that how we're working? The money got you that gassed up that you feel anything you can solve with money. Let me tell you, bro. I respect integrity, bro. And you don't have none. You're a despicable, disgusting human being, bro. Gao Chayla, 99. The way you've been carrying on, you are a cancer to this industry. A lot of people in the genre, from piano. Nebana Baga. Nebana Baga. You are my kids, all of you guys. My little piano. You are my kids. I'm for sure. And then you can go pee, you can go pee. So hip hop. At some point, I used to run hip hop. <laughs> I'm sick and I should go to hip hop. Maybe it can come back because it's like you know. can see you are cancer, but people are afraid of you. I'm saying, Sunny Boy, come see me. Actually, let me take off my shades for this. Let me tell you straight up. The things you've been doing, there's a thing called karma, bro. You don't get away with treating people the way you do. You don't disrespect people the way you do and get away with it. Your time is coming. Let's get straight to it. DJ Mabodisa says, maybe he's talking about the other hot man. He's referring to Sir Trail, okay? This young man needs help. I remember him not going to the music video yeah, them Tuda, John Wick, I knew we were going to have a problem here. Self-sabotage and karma not pitching to these gigs. Okay. He took it a step further. Let me read what he says. Jo, 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 Jo. No, it's a weird... Ha, ha, ha. Let me give you guys a reference for people that don't understand. This guy swore at my mother's private parts. My mother has nothing to do with this podcast. My mother has nothing to do with any of this entertainment industry. And I'm like, bro, when has it become cool to disrespect your elders? When has it become cool to disrespect someone's mother that you don't know? This situation is beyond me at this moment. Um, you saying, swearing at my mother, I've got family in KZN, I got family in LX, I got family in Soweto. Everybody's pretty upset. Bakwatilia plan. You just didn't offend me. You chose to offend my whole family. Present you will split sheet. Oh yeah, go to the man police. I'll answer the split sheet next. Next. Hey, but maybe maybe Lipoli was in the studio moment at that time. Bro, into where can go na? Hmm. Where can go? Kiaul. Kiga le plan bara bara. I go to fuck up here. Ya giza raga ya faka o suri ji ka tagare. Eh begile begile in a plumbing mood. Kya u? Kya u? Ngusha bro. please let's just sort out the the, the business part. Cuz Bogli out never want to speak any negativity about him. It's someone ekim nganya and ekim respect down. So please I I'll, I'll sort that out the business. Well. So I'm a little bit confused. Shebashid comes here to this podcast and expresses how you robbed him of his money and you mad at me. 
explain. Where is the logic in that? I just gave Shebashid a platform just to speak. I don't even know you guys had differences. Please explain that to me, because Odom, Sunny Boy. I mean, me and you actually got on a call after the Shebashid episode. And we spoke, and the conclusion after we got on the call was, you are going to come on the episode and express things from your side. But guess what? You didn't come to this episode. Because you are afraid, DJ Mabarisa. You are afraid to answer the questions, the real, real questions. Because on this podcast, we ask the real questions. Yes, Mac G. We ask real questions on this podcast. Watch any episode we've had. If you want to come to a podcast where they're not going to ask you who you smashed, come to the LTDO podcast. If you want to come to a podcast where they're not going to ask you about your identity of your kid and lie about that and the father of your kid, come to the LTDO podcast. Right, Chair? We just operate from an integrity point of view. See, Mac G, we build artists and you break down artists. You don't have values. You lack a moral compass. And for me, I don't vibe with that type of energy. So moving forward, actually, I'm just even remembering. Mac G, weren't you calling me, bro? Asking for guest numbers? Didn't you call me asking for Lonely London's number? You were the big shot asking me for guest numbers. <laughs> so now if you like if you mess with my braid now, what am I taking at home? So that frustrates me. So I end up doing what talking. Mm. But I respect that person so much that I don't want to put your name out there, but people might have an idea for me. People might have an idea and you know yourself. It's crazy that people always assume that person. Why? <laughs> No one mentioned your name. It probably hit a nerve. Because you are guilty. You have a guilty conscience. You can't sleep at night. You've been doing people bad for 10 years and your karma is coming to you. I can see you can't get a lot of people who are doing But over here, we don't condone no sucker disrespectful shit. If you guys think it's cool to swear, at people's parents, don't watch this podcast. If you people think it's cool to disrespect other artists, take their money that's due to them, don't watch this podcast. We don't want a fan base like that. We don't want viewers like that. If you don't want to go to a podcast where they depend on the second guy to keep it running, come to the LTO podcast. If you don't want to come to a podcast where they feel they have to grill you to get views, come to the LTO podcast. Mac G, DJ Maporisa, I'm here to tell you, much love. I'm out. I actually don't mean that much love. I'm out for it. Where are you tech, Penduka? There's an condo. Oh, what what's happening? What's what happening? Ah, uh, this El Tito, this El Tito guy of yours, my man, you must come down. Uh, let's me, I don't get it, bro. Like, guys, what did I say about El Tito last week? Let's call. Max his... said what he said, right? Let's call his baby mama because she's got him on a leash. She's the only person he listens to. Because no, he's like, now it's Saul. Let me now it's, let me deal with Saul. No, no, no. She's the only person he listens to. Oh, who's this yeah. now? Uh, baby mama. How do you get El Tito's number? Hey, don't worry. Don't ask things you don't want to know, chief. Hey, Stando wow. Sam. Oh, my word. Hi, how are you? I'm good at you, Stando Sam. I'm all right. Listen, man, it's been a minute. Are you good? I'm okay. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. But listen, I've got a message for your baby daddy, right? Please get a pen and paper. You got to write this down. It's very important. It's paramount. My goodness. What do you want to say to Stando now? Philippe. Okay. You got to tell him, right? You got a pen and paper? Uh, just hold on for me two seconds. Yeah, get a Wait, pen and paper. Man, talk. Get hey, a pen man, and hey, paper. Imanglan penduk. Imanglan penduk. We are not taking chief. Yeah, you got a pen and paper? Yes, yes. Yes. Tell him he's getting too excited. He must stay in his lane. He's the table I of podcasting. 
please let him know okay. that people do not watch his podcast because of him. It's because of his guests, not him. <laughs> How dare you? But you know what? This is giving real beef. It's not giving vegan at all. But you know what? I'm going to set him right for you. Okay. Okay. No problem. Uh, <laughs> my backbone, do you want to add it to that? Oh, he backbone. <laughs> hey, just ask him. Hey, man, like, what did I do to... I sought El Tito and I told him his show is, is... He's doing well, his show is dope. And then Jiggy Jiggy, he's saying, I showed him fake love. You're the one who's been dissing him and whatever and saying his show is your TV. Ask him, what know, problem what, does he have with me? What did I, what the fuck did I do? What the fuck did <laughs> and, I say? And you know, when I met him, I was with my mother. So that's the only reason I said nice things about his podcast. No, I met him. I can't tell I... him the truth in front of my father, you know. It's disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I meant it, but now I was like, <laughs> Yeah, man, if the beef was with him, let the beef be with Mac. You know what I mean? If he's going to address me, he mustn't say he's dealing with me and then proceed to say I've, I showed him fake love when I've never showed him hate. And then he said we have mentioned his name many times and it was never positive. I've never mentioned El Tito's name even once unless I'm quoting someone who was on his podcast. Hey, so dog. what the fuck nah, does he have a problem with Relax, me? man. You almost died, man. Don't let that get to you, man. No, man. I, I, like You dog, know these failed rappers? We've seen this, bro. <laughs> Uh, the LES, his podcast came and went. It's, it's just another. Uh, come on, man. We've got bigger fish shit to fry. <laughs> you the small fry. What, what are you the? Yeah, you the small what is he the? Um, the what is he the small fish? You're yeah, the fish the fry. <laughs> hey man, now let me deal with salt. Nah, he showed me fake love, bro. I showed you love and it was even. Real. Even his attack was PC. <laughs> <laughs> Like, did you see how they cut it up? They're like, are oh, you swearing too much? You gotta cut that out. <laughs> but he did say that he does it to be clean and <laughs> yeah. whatever. Controversial YouTuber Slick Talk has stunned his followers with a dramatic weight loss transformation. Known for his outspoken and often abrasive commentary, Slick Talk's new look has sparked a wave of reactions and discussions online. That's all for this week's recap. Stay tuned to Inside Buzz for more updates on your favorite celebrities and all the juiciest gossip. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up with all the buzz. Until next time, stay buzzing.